Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can actually fetch database credentials from AWS Secrets Manager and then communicate with our database. We will then look into how we can actually run this application completely offline using local stack. And finally to cap off, we will actually write an integration test to make sure this entire setup works with local stack using test containers. So with this, let's get started. So let's go to start.spring.io and we are going to create our web application. So let's add the web dependency here and then we would add an actuator. And then we'll have the spring data JPA dependency. So we need this three dependencies not to communicate with AWS, but we need it for persisting the data to show you some properties that we fetch from AWS secrets manager, and then also to provide some endpoints through which we can save and retrieve data. Along with this, I'll be using Java 17 and I will be creating the group ID with my name and, and I'll give it a name called as spring AWS secrets manager. I'll generate this particular project. Now I already have this project being generated and I have some code that I've already written. So let's look at this particular project here. Now, if you see here, I have this particular source folder and I have this pom.xml file. So let's first look at the pom.xml file. here. Now in this pom.xml file, we have this AWS secrets manager project that we just created. And then we have some dependencies that we need to add. So first thing what I have done is I have added this dependency management that is Spring Cloud AWS dependencies. So this will actually manage all the Spring Cloud AWS dependencies that we need for this particular project. And I'm using the version M2. So right now this M2 version is currently available, which you can use soon. We will have the general availability of 3.0.0 version. So next, what we are going to do is we are going to add the Spring Cloud AWS starter secrets manager dependency. So using this dependency, we will be actually fetching the secrets from secrets manager. And then after starting our application. Now, along with this, I have these testing libraries that I have here, which includes test containers. And we have the MySQL and the local stack test containers also. Now this local stack test containers as of now still requires the AWS SDK version one, but this dependency that we are using for secrets manager uses SDK version two. So that's the reason I have marked this particular dependency with the scope test. Along with this, I just have this plugin for running integration tests because finally we will be having an integration test, which will run this application against local stack. Now this is all the dependencies that we need. Now let's look at the source code. So here what I have, I have this particular simple domain object, which has just an ID and a name. So our intention is we are going to store this particular object into a MySQL database. And for this, we have this particular model repo, which is just a extension of the JPA repository. Along with this, I have this web controller, which provides just two endpoints. One is to fetch all the data that we have stored and one is to save the data that we want into the database. Now, all of this thing has been done. We have written this code, but now we need to provide the configuration for communicating with the database, right? So let's go to this resources here. In the resources, we have this property file wherein we specify the spring data source, specifying the JDBC URL, and we have this placeholder for the username and the password here. Next, what we need to do is we need to specify how you can fetch the secrets, right? So for this, we have this spring cloud AWS credentials, and I'm going to make use of the profile credential mechanism. So this is a mechanism wherein I have the AWS profile, which I've configured using the AWS CLI on my local system, and I have given it a particular AWS profile called as personal. So this is basically my personal account, which I'm trying to connect, which has the secrets that I've created already for this. So using this credentials, it will actually now fetch the secrets from secrets manager. Now, along with this, I need to specify which secrets that I need to pull from secrets manager, right? So for this, we have this config import here, which actually tells that from AWS secrets manager. So you specify your AWS secrets manager, then a colon and a list of secrets that you want to fetch. So I have these two secrets, which are separated using a semicolon here. This contains some arbitrary secrets, and this contains a DB credentials that I want to use in my connection here. 
Along with this, I have specified an optional secret that I want to pull. Now, what is the default behavior of this Spring Config Import? What it does is, whatever secrets that you have specified here, these secrets have to be available to the application, otherwise the application will not start. But if you have certain secrets that you want to optionally load, meaning not block the startup of the application, you can put them under this optional tag here. Don't forget this is actually Spring Config Import. Because it's a YAML file, you can just see config and import over here. So now we have configured all of this part related to the secrets, related to the credentials for AWS Secrets Manager. Now let's look at the secrets on AWS Secrets Manager. So I have these secrets here, wherein I have two secrets, that is a secret Spring Boot app and the secret DB credential. These are the same two secrets that we have here. Now let's look at this secret. So I have this secret here, which has the DB user and the DB password, which has the actual values that is user one and password. Now, if you see that these keys are exactly those placeholder keys that I'm using here, that is DB user and DB password, which is exactly these keys inside the secret. Now the second secret is nothing but it has some two properties property one and property two which has property one value and property two you can completely ignore this there's nothing that you need to look into this what we need is this secret that is the db user and the db password which is under secret slash db credentials let's go back to the property files here now here what we have is along with this i specified this management endpoint so i want to actually show you all what those properties are that got fetched from secrets manager so it gives you a visual understanding about what those properties are now we have credential settings being done we have the config import also being done we have the url for the database everything ready but now we don't have the database right so we will be spinning up a local mysql instance using docker compose so i have this docker compose here which has right now this one service that is mysql service and we also have this local stack here. as of now i'm commenting out local stack and i'll be using only the mysql instance for now we will work with local stack a bit late so with this i'm going to start my docker compose and the database has started now and next what i'm going to do is I'm going to actually start this particular application. So let me start this particular application now. So the application has started right now. Let's look at the logs and see what it has fetched. So it has found that this particular secret, which is the optional secret, it could not find and it didn't actually stop the application from starting up. But the required secrets, that is these two, were actually been pulled because they were marked as optional false. So now these secrets are actually been loaded and the application has started with the application actually communicating with the database itself. To actually see these properties that have been fetched from Secrets Manager, let's actually use the actuator endpoint and see the properties. So let's call the actuator endpoint that is localhost 8080 actuator slash env. And then we have these properties that have been loaded into our application, right? So let's scroll down to the secrets that have been loaded. So if you see here, we have these secrets that were loaded from AWS Secrets Manager and you can see the username and the DB password which is right now been censored and you can see this property one and property two that has been already loaded. So these are the same values that have been loaded from Secrets Manager which has these two values. To make sure that this application is all working fine, let's actually make a post call and see. So let's actually fetch this first. So you see that there is nothing been stored because we didn't store anything in the database. And then we will actually try to save something. So I have this post call with some payload here and I'm going to save this. And this is actually saving this particular data into the database. And now let's actually try fetching it with the get call. And as you can see, we get that particular data. So with this, we actually fetch secrets from AWS Secrets Manager and started our application and then also communicated with our database using the credentials from Secrets Manager. Now this is actually working with the real AWS Secrets Manager service, right? Now let's actually try to communicate with the local stack instance. Now local stack is like a local way of actually communicating with AWS services, which mimic how AWS services work in real. So let's actually go back to the application and stop this here. And what we are going to do now is we are going to make some changes into the property files. Before making the property file changes, let's look at the Docker Compose. So we have Docker Compose here and I'm going to uncomment this. So we have local stack image that I'm going to start up and I'm going to expose port 4566 
to my host itself. Along with this, I'm specifying a volume path. Now this volume path will contain some information that I want to load when this particular local stack instance starts. So now this volume that I have mounted here, let's see what actually this has. So this has this particular script here, which actually will initialize this local stack instance with some secrets inside it. So now to actually create these secrets, we will use the exact same command that we can use using the actual AWS CLI. But in this case, the command name is going to be AWS local. Now this AWS local is the command that is provided by local stack to actually create secrets in the local stack instance. So with this, I'm actually creating two secrets here. One is a DB user with the DB password and the other one is the property one and the property two value. So these are the two secrets that will be created when the local instance comes up. So now let's actually go ahead and start this particular Docker Compose image. So for this, I will stop this one and start the Docker Compose. So if you see here in the logs of the Docker Compose, you see that these secrets have been created as a part of the entry endpoint here. Now what we are going to do is let's go to the property files and actually communicate with our local stack instance. So for this, I'm going to comment out this credential part because we are now going to communicate with local stack and then uncomment this section. Now in this section, I have specified that Spring Cloud AWS Secrets Manager, we use this endpoint that is localhost 4566. This is the endpoint to the local stack instance. And I'm also specifying the credentials as none. So these could be any random values because a local stack doesn't require any kind of credentials, but you need to specify some value for the AWS client that gets configured inside Spring Boot to start up. Without these particular values, it will not be able to create the AWS client. Now what we are going to do is we are going to start this particular application. So the application has started and it's now actually communicating with the local stack instance and it's actually loading the secrets from local stack. So these are the two secrets that it loaded from local stack and the application has now started. This is how you can actually run a local stack instance on your machine and then actually communicate your application offline and you don't have to actually communicate with the real AWS instance. Local stack kind of mimics how the AWS Secrets Manager works. And it's not only AWS Secrets Manager services that it provides, it provides many other services. Some of them are open source and they are community provided services and they are free to use, but some of them are paid ones. So you need to figure out which one you would want to use and which one you would want to pay for. Along with this, what I'm going to do is every application that we develop, we usually need to provide some tests, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write actually some tests. So for this, I have this application IT test. So it's an integration test for now. And in this, I'm going to use a Spring Boot test annotation. So this will start up the application for us and then we will run our integration tests for it. So before we go into the setup and stuff, let's actually see what we want to test. So in this test function here, I have this model with some ID and a name. I'm going to make a post call and then store this particular model inside it. And then check if we get the response as the ID and the name. Then I'm going to make a get call and then check if I get that ID and the name here. So this is a simple test, store something and fetch something. If this thing works fine, basically our secrets have been loaded. We are able to communicate with the database and everything. Now for this test to run, we need a database, right? So for this, I have this particular test container that is a MySQL container, which is going to start up with the username, user one and the password. Now to start up this particular container, including this test container annotation, which will actually handle the life cycle of the test containers that I'm specifying using this test container annotation. Along with the database, I have this local stack container, which is also annotated with container annotation. For this local stack, I need to initialize it with some secrets, right? So for this, what I'm doing is I'm mounting a particular script at this particular entry point such that those secrets will be created. This is the same script that I had. I'm just copying it into the resources section, specifying the commands to create that particular secrets. So now with this, we will have both the test containers started, but we need to configure the application to actually use these values, right? So for this, I have this dynamic property source and this before all method. 
Now I'm setting the database data source URL using the dynamic property source mechanism while the local stack information I'm setting it via the before all mechanism. Now why am I doing this using the before all mechanism of JUnit? The reason is because dynamic property source does not work properly with Spring Cloud Config Import. So this does not work with Spring Config Import and hence we have to specify it using the before all method. So with this actually we have set up the test configuration. Now let's actually run this particular test. So the test has run and the test was successful. So with this we can make sure that the secrets were loaded from the local stack docker image and also we were able to communicate with the database to store information and then also retrieve information from it. Now if you want to write good and efficient tests like these and learn various ways of testing you can now go to this particular masterclass course through which you can actually figure out the various ways of testing Spring Boot applications. So I have this particular course called as Testing Spring Boot Application Masterclass. This course will give you a comprehensive guide about how to use the various testing libraries and the various types of tests that you can do on a Spring Boot application. So this course provides you real world scenarios and not just any kind of hello world scenarios. So I have provided a link in the description below. You can go to this course using this particular link in the description. So we saw how we can actually fetch database credentials from AWS Secrets Manager and then start our application and communicate with the database. Now I keep on exploring such kind of things. So if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this particular channel for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.